Welcome to the Nexus 2 Help Guide. This session covers capturing, calibrating, and processing a calibration trial when using the plug and gate labeling template and biomechanical model. In this guide, we will look at the workflow for two different types of calibration trials. The first type is the more traditional static calibration trial, while the second type is for a range of motion or ROM trial. For the static trial, we will look at the considerations for capture, processing, and calibrating. We will then look at how to model using this template. Lastly, we will look at how to make this initial step of calibration and modeling more automated. For the ROM trial, we will first discuss when such a trial may be necessary, and then how to go about capturing and processing this trial. We will then look at how to model after calibrating the template. In a previous guide titled Plugging Gate Markers in Anthropometrics, the subject was prepared both in terms of placing markers on anatomical landmarks and entering in the required anthropometric measurements. Please be confident in these steps before proceeding. In terms of recording the calibration trial, this can either be done from the subject preparation tab or from the data capture tab. The main differences of capturing within the subject preparation are that the trial name will be based off of the subject name with the suffix cal appended and that analog and video data will never be captured. If you want either of these two options, you will have to capture from the Data Capture tab. In this example, I will capture from the Subject Preparation tab and then show how this may be done later in the Data Capture tab. When ready to collect the, uh, the calibration trial, have your subject stand upright with the knees about shoulder width apart. The shoulder should then be abducted 90 degrees with the elbows flexed 90 degrees and the palms facing down. This posture has been termed the motorbike pose. This allows the software to recognize the cloud of markers and aid in distinguishing the left from the right side. Before pressing start here under subject capture, try to perform a quick check to make sure all the markers are in fact visible. If they are not, make sure you have actually placed them on the subject or that the subject is not occluding them. Sometimes the software will try to label the subject by using the existing template. If this makes it difficult to see the markers, navigate to the system tab Click on Local Vicon System, navigate down to Processing Output Level and change Labels to Reconstructions. Just make sure to change it back for the dynamic trials if you wish to see uh, real-time labeling. This is something I will do later in the video. Then when you're confident all the markers are there, go ahead and click Start. The subject will need to remain as stationary as possible during capture. You only really need one frame of acceptable data, so I will make this about one second long. You will see that as soon as I click stop, this, uh, the trial will actually appear in the data management and that it has switched from the live to the trial view. It has opened automatically. This is verified up here at the top where it no longer says live but actually says the, the trial Felix Cal 01. From here you actually have to make a choice. You can process the static trial now or immediately begin capturing dynamic trials by clicking go live. If you wait to process the static trial, there's a good chance that the real-time labeling will not be reliable. As such, I will uh, show you the, the workflow for processing the static trial before capturing any dynamic trials. So the first thing that we will notice in the workspace view is that there are no markers. By default, Nexus will not reconstruct the markers for you. The term reconstruct refers to the process of combining the data from each 2D camera view with the calibration file to produce 3D marker coordinates. This procedure can either be done from the toolbar, which is really just running the pipeline, or from the pipelines list, which is over here. So I can switch this to reconstruct. I will do this from the toolbar. With the markers reconstructed, I will then run the pipeline termed auto initialize labeling. This pipeline calibrates the template, i.e. the VST, and creates the subject specific VSK or labeling skeleton. If I navigate to the pipeline tab, and change to auto initialize labeling, you will see that it consists of three steps. The first is auto label static. As the name suggests, it will automatically label a single frame within the calibration trial. By default, this will be the current frame you are on. Before running this operation, it is important to check that A, all the markers are there, and B, there are no ghost markers near the subject. Failure to comply with either of these two provisions will likely cause some incorrect labeling. You can always change the current frame and run this pipeline on a different one. To run this pipeline operation individually, I will right click on it and select Run Selected Op. 
The green check mark indicates that this pipeline operation was successful. If it was not, let's say due to a missing marker or as an example, you would get a red X. To quickly check the labels before proceeding, use the hotkey of the control uh, button plus the space bar. So I can navigate around and actually look at my markers. I will then hit control space again to get rid of the labels. The next operation is to scale the subject. This compares the current subject to the generic template and helps to scale the size of the subject using a single value. So I'll right click and run selected op. You won't actually see anything here, but if I go to the log, I can scroll down and you can actually see that it has started and it was successful. Lastly, I will go in um, and run the marker only subject calibration. Uh, and this will actually save the marker locations relative to its parent joint and you'll actually see the kinematic segments appear. Next, we can apply the biomechanical model to this template to obtain biomechanical outputs such as joints, segments, and angles. To do this, we will switch the current pipeline to plug and gate static. There is really only one operation and that gets run as part of the pipeline. Before processing it, there are a few settings that we can change. So if I highlight it, the properties are down below. The marker diameter should reflect the size of the markers used, and the assume horizontal will adjust the orientation of the particular segment to be parallel to the XY plane, even if the marker suggests that the segment is not. When you're sure that the settings are correct, go ahead and run the pipeline. So I can just run the entire pipeline operation here. If this pipeline fails, the main causes are either a missing marker or a missing anthropometric measurement. Lastly, make sure to save the trial. So from here, I'd be ready to capture a dynamic trial by hitting go live and then going into the data capture tab. If you are certain that you get a good motorbike pose every single time and you want to automate the processing of the static trial, you can do the following. We're going to go ahead and create a new pipeline which combines the reconstruct, auto initialize, and the plug and gate static pipelines. So we'll first start off with the auto initialize labeling pipeline. Then under core processing, I'm going to go ahead and add in combined processing. Uh, under data processing, I'm going to add in the process uh, static plug and gate model. Um, and then under export, I'm going to add in save trial C3D and VSK. I'm then going to just reorder it so that reconstruction will actually be first the combined processing. So it's up at the top. I'm going to highlight combined processing and just make sure that the processing level is actually set to reconstructions. Uh, and then I'm going to have the three steps of auto initialize. Then I'm going to have it process the static plug and gate model. Again, if you need to, go ahead and change any of the settings here. And then I'm going to have it save the trial. Uh, so I'm going to save this as a new pipeline. I'm going to press that save button. It's going to ask me to um, put in a new name as I cannot save over any pipeline that's got this Nexus icon next to it. So I'm just going to call this auto static plug in gate and then hit OK. And I'm going to go ahead and make this shared so that everyone has access to it. So you can see now I actually in my pipeline list, I have a new pipeline that's called auto static plug in gate. So now I'm going to go ahead and go live. You can see my subject is still there in the motorbike pose. I'm going to navigate over into the data capture tab. First, I will save a trial type that's going to be called default, something that has zero uh, settings in it. So I'll go ahead and press the save icon and select default. And again, I'll make that shared. Um, I can then go ahead and make a new uh, trial type. And again, I will call this something that will make me think of uh, being static trial. So here I could just call it static trial. Okay, again, I will just make this shared. So now I have the, the options of selecting whether or not I want uh, any force plate data, EMG, or, or video camera data. In this case, I only have optical, so that's the only one selected, but I can deselect them should these actually be in my system file. Um, as I only really need uh, one second of data, I'm going to go ahead and tell it to stop after the duration of one. And then under my post capture pipeline setup, I'm going to uh, make sure to run a pipeline this time and I'm going to go ahead and select the one that I just created which is auto static plug and gate. So now when I click start it should automatically run through and do everything for me. So um, I'm going to go ahead and save this uh, trial type first so that it runs this every single time and I'm going to go ahead and click start. You'll see that it captured the data, it's taken me offline, it's provided a different name for the trial 
and it's actually processed and calibrated everything for me. Again, you want to make sure that you can get reliable captures for your static trial before wanting to automate the process this much. Calibration using a static frame is perfect if you are analyzing gait or slow running trials with average sized adults. However, if you are analyzing children or very tall adults, or very dynamic activities such as sprinting or jumping, you may find that this calibration may not produce reliable labeling. This is where a range of motion or ROM trial will become useful. A ROM trial allows Nexus to recalculate the labeling statistics within the template for each specific subject. This will help account for higher frequency and or higher amplitude marker movement resulting from a more dynamic and or flexible activity when compared to gait. As such, the physical movements performed by the subject in the ROM should at least mimic the joint ranges and velocities expected during the dynamic trials. While you could use a dynamic trial as the ROM, it is probably best if the subject can perform a series of movements in the middle of the capture volume that can meet the joint range and velocity requirements. For example, if we were analyzing a counter movement jump, the ROM may look like something like this. This time, I will capture the trial in the data capture tab and add a note so that I know that it is my ROM trial. So we'll have the subject start in the motorbike, they will perform a start arc, they will then perform a knee flexion extension across the entire range, then some ankle circles, and then we'll go ahead and do a few hops. To process the ROM trial, go ahead and open it and replicate the steps for the static trial, that is to reconstruct and then auto-initialize. We're going to add in an extra step here, which is to then reconstruct and label. We can then quickly go into the quality tab and look to see if any of our markers are labeled. If they were, we can go ahead and scrub through the trial and apply the labels within or either label edit or right clicking on the marker and then going to the bottom of the list and seeing which marker was uh, not uh, labeled. As we don't have to do that, we can just go ahead and run the calibrate labeling skeleton ROM pipeline. As this pipeline can take a bit of time to calculate, we want to make sure that we develop a quick set of reasonable movements so that it has less frames to use as part of its calculation. Once it's complete, we can scrub back to the, the first frame where they're in the static position, and we can go in and run our plug and gate static, just like we normally would. Now we can go in and save the trial and then process our dynamic trials like normal. Thank you for watching this video. As always, if you have any questions about your hardware or software, please do not hesitate to contact us at support at vicon.com.